Hey, and welcome to your second flip lesson. Today we're going to talk about ways you can transform your parent function graphs. And I know you've done this quite a bit in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, but I want you to think about it today in a different way than you did in the past. So let's talk a little bit about how we can transform parent functions. We're going to build on some of the knowledge you have, but we're going to think about things slightly different than, than how you have in the past. So We'll start out transforming a, a parabola. It's not the best shape to transform, um, but it's a good it's a good start. So in Algebra 1, if you had to graph a parabola, my guess is you made an XY table and you plugged in values for X. And these are usually your starting five numbers, a couple negatives, zero and a couple positives. And you plug negative two in for X and, and you get four and all these numbers pop out. And then in Algebra 1, you'd you'd graph these points. You'd graph the point negative 2, 4. So from the origin, we'd go left 2 and up 4 and plot that point and, and, and negative 1, 1 and 0, 0, etc. And then you'd, you'd draw the nice curve in there and everything would be set. That's great. But then all of a sudden in Algebra 2, the game changed. So all of a sudden in Algebra 2, now we, we have these numbers out in front. So maybe this is a half x squared and this is a, a minus 4. And here's what I'm going to argue for. The first thing I, I think you should do when you're graphing uh, a function that has been transformed somehow is I, I, I think you ought to shift the starting point. We no, normally start graphs right here at the origin, but in this case, you can see this, this minus four at the end, that's, that's going to be a vertical shift. And so we're going to start um, by, by moving down four. So my new origin or my new starting spot is actually going to be right here down four. So that point right there is going to count as my brand new starting place where we start this graph. And then the second thing we do is we make our X, Y table of the stripped down parent function. This is just a quadratic Y equals X squared. So if I strip all the shifting and all the scalars away from it, this is what that parent graph looks like. But instead of thinking of these as points, I want you to think of these things as movements. I'm going to say that word again. These are movements from your original starting point. These are movements. Look at that movements from the original starting point. Now we do have a scalar here, this one half. This one half is not being affected by this exponent of two. The parent function y equals x squared, the function here is a squaring function. And since this one half isn't part of the function itself, it's an afterthought, it affects the y. And you remember from algebra two what this does is it's going to take all those y values and multiply them by a half. So instead of a four, we'll have a two. One becomes a half, zero doesn't change. 1 becomes a half and 4 becomes 2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this, this table right here and I'm going to plot these. Again, these are movements. So from my new origin, I'm going to go left 2, up 2. So I go to the left 2, up 2, and boom, there's a point. From my new origin, I'm going to move left 1, up a half. Left 1, up a half. Boom, there's a point. From the new origin, 0, 0. Mm hmm, let's just get rid of that guy. Now, there we go. From my new origin, right 1, up a half. Right 1, up a half. And from my new origin, right 2, up 2. And you get basically this parabola. Now, that might not be enough, so you might have to imagine more points. Like, like maybe we ought to, we ought to say, okay, what if, what if we had a 3 here? then our y value would be 9, because y is equal to x squared. But with this scalar out in front, it would actually be 4 and a half. Oh, gosh. All right, so there we go. A little, a little crazy. So from the origin, I'm going to move right 3, right 3, 1, 2, 3, up 4, uh, up 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, and I'll plot that point. And of course, I'm going to use some symmetry here. And do that and I could put in four and that would take me up eight five six seven 
and that would give me that point and I'll use some symmetry there and then you could sketch a nice smooth curve look at this smooth nice smooth curve passing through Ooh, I'm drawing with my mouse uh, okay that kind of went awry but you know what I'm trying to do there let's take a look at another one. Oh my goodness now look at it look at the function so again let's see what we've got here I've got a lot of things going on first of all this minus one is inside the function and so is this one half so if we handle our our new origin if we try to find where the new origin is let's see what happens Okay, so first of all, I have a horizontal shift. Now you probably remember from Algebra 2 learning a trick. And that trick was you set whatever is inside the function equal to zero, and you solve it for x. Now tomorrow we'll talk about why this trick works, and we'll kind of talk about why things behave so weird inside the function as opposed to outside the function. But anyway, if I'm solving this for x, I, I get, uh, whoops, I get that x equals 2. And that tells me that it is a horizontal shift to the right, too. So I can see that my new origin is going to be, there's no vertical shift, but it's going to be to the right, too. So 1, 2, that's my new starting spot right there. Now, there's a half here. And since the half is inside the function, not outside, but it is being affected by this, this squaring, it's going to have an effect horizontally. So we have a horizontal scalar. So what I do is I strip this thing down to my parent function, y equals x squared. I make my xy table of movements. Remember, these aren't points, but they're movements from this new origin. Now, this is a half, and it's inside the function. Since it's inside the function, it affects the x's. But as you learned last year, not in the way you think it will. Most kids say, oh, you multiply the x's by a half. Well, that's not correct. We do the opposite. We're actually going to multiply the x's by the reciprocal of a half, or 2. And so each one of these x values gets multiplied by 2. This becomes negative 4, negative 2. That's a 0, 2, and 4. And again, tomorrow we'll talk about why things behave the opposite way you think they would inside the function. But that's tomorrow. Let's plot these points. From my new... Oh, I misspoke. I said, let's plot these points. I meant, let's travel these movements. From the new origin, I'm going to go left 4, up 4. Left 4, up 4. And there's my first point. Left 2, up 1. Left 2, up 1. I'm going to, let's get you out of here. I'm going to go from the origin, over 0, up 0. Right 2, up 1. Right 2, up 1. And finally, right 4, one, two, three, four, up four. And then I get this beautiful curve right here. Let me draw a smooth sketch. I have totally lost my, my pen. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm going to draw this nice smooth curve here as best I can. I'm drawing with a mouse. So, oh, well, that's not bad. Now again, today I just want you to get the movements down, the idea that we take a parent function, we handle the new origin, where this graph starts, and then we make a table of movements. We'll talk about the why tomorrow. That'll be a great talk, but let's just get the idea down now. One more, one more to look at. Oh, sweet mother, look at this. We have all sorts of things going on here. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening. Okay, well, let's see what we've got. First of all, I have to handle where is my new origin. So I'm going to do that old trick that you learned in Algebra 1. I'm going to look inside the function, and I'm going to find the horizontal shift by setting whatever is inside this function, this 2x minus 1, set that equal to 0, and solve for x. So this tells me that I'm going to shift my new starting point to the right 1 half. What about a vertical shift? Well, 
this is your vertical shift right here. We're going to start up seven. So my new starting spot right here, I'll just, I'll just lightly circle to the right a half up four, five, six, seven, right there. That's where I'm going to start this graph right there at that spot. Now, just like the other graphs, I'm going to strip this down to the bare bones minimum. So I'm going to take a look here at, whoops, at y equals x squared. I'm going to shift all the shifting. I'm going, to, I'm going to get rid of all the scaling. Just y equals x squared. Now what's this negative 2 do? Well, it's outside the function. And if it's outside the function, it affects the y's exactly as you think it should. We're going to multiply those y's by negative 2. Whoops. So boom. There we go. Now, anything inside the function affects the x's opposite the way you think you would. We're not going to multiply the x's by 2. We're going to divide them by 2 or multiply by a half. Boom. There go all the x's. Now, I'm going to take this table of movements from my new origin. So from this new starting point, left 1, down 8. Left 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there. Boom. Left a half left a half down two right there boom from the new origin go over zero up zero what okay just show up right there and i'll put that back because that's our new origin from the new origin right a half down two from the new origin right one down eight and we get this super skinny parabola oh my goodness this is super skinny let's see if i can sketch oh whoa, oh sweet mother okay that we need to fix that. that it's, don't look at that. Don't, don't, nobody look at that. Turn away. Okay, let's do it again. We, we get this super skinny parabola here. Oh, good Lord. What? Uh, okay. All right. Mr. Brass manual dexterity is going away from him as he gets older. But anyway, you know what I'm trying to make there. It's a real skinny parabola. That is your flip lesson for the day. We'll talk about why this works and we'll really see it in action tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody.